Hey everyone, today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 6 that was sent here as a disclosed prior repair attempt, which I thoroughly appreciate whenever it actually says, I tried to fix it, I fucked up, here it is, do what you can, rather than, hey, what do you charge to fix a uh, backlight on an, iPhone, on an iPhone 6? And you give them a price and it's like, yeah, everything's good until you get it, and it's like, hey, what do you charge to fix backlight, water damage, and a prior repair attempt? It's like, ah, none of this shit was mentioned. So, anyways, I'm going to be doing a disclosed prior repair attempt on an iPhone, let's see, that's the wrong basket, on an iPhone 6. Unlike every other basket you see here on my table, this one is actually disclosed. I have no idea what I'm getting into here. I have not looked at this phone yet. I have not hooked power to it. I, I don't know what the deal is other than I tried to let my friend put a screen on it and now it don't work no more. So let's see what we are up against. I'm going to go ahead and begin by taking the screws out of this phone. Now this is just a, a magnet pad. I buy them at Walmart. They're the double back stuff where like you can turn a sheet of paper into a magnet or whatever. You peel you peel the back off of this and it's got a sticky backing on it. So that, that's what this stuff is. I buy them in larger sheets and then just cut them with scissors. All right, let's see if we've got any surprises here behind door number one. I do see a triggered water damage indicator. Oops. Let's go ahead and check behind number door number two and number three. This phone actually says that it gets backlight but no image. I'm really hoping it's not stuck in DFU mode. That's like my worst enemy. I hate giving people that news. Uh, sorry, you're going to restore it. Which brings me to something. You know in the settings in iOS, you can change the setting under security to where like if you type in the passcode X amount of times wrong, it'll automatically, you can have it automatically wipe the phone. Why is that there? Like, why is that even there? Do you know how many customers that I've had to deal with that their kid got a hold of the phone and all of a sudden it's sitting there saying iPhone disabled, connect to iTunes? Well, at that point, your only option is to erase the phone. Like maybe, hopefully, you've got a backup, but if you don't have a backup, you're going to wipe it and, and you're going to start over. So for them to put the option in settings for automatically wipe after X amount of uh, failed attempts is just like, why? Why is that there? Whether you're going to automatically wipe it after X amount of failed attempts or you're going to disable it and force me to wipe it, either way, if you type in the password too many times wrong, that shit's getting wiped. So, uh, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing here, but I have ran into that so many times. And I figured while I was talking out, uh, talking out my ass, I might as well talk about something. So, okay, we've got door number one, two, and three out of the picture here. Let's swoop on over and have us a microscope evaluation here. So we have backlight and no image is my description. Now the only... Here, let me get show you guys what I'm looking at. The only thing that I was told about was the attempted screen replacement. I didn't know about anybody picking around on this thing. Now, is that actually burnt off of the top of there, or did somebody pick at it? That almost looks burnt, but this is the type of thing that I'm used to seeing whenever there is a, a prior repair attempt. So, let's not burn up a bunch of boards. One day I got to replace this with a better drying system because if it wasn't for my third party alarm on this junk ass hot plate, I would be broke by now because that thing would be melting. Just It would self destruct, it would burn the building down. Okay, now I do see some long screw damage in over here in this screw hole. Oh my god. Man, somebody really drove that one home. Holy smokes. It's like, when they start crunching, stop! Like, that screw is not supposed to, it's not supposed to make crunching sounds, for crying out loud. Now, I think immediately what we have to worry about over here 
if my memory serves me right on the iPhone 6, is uh, lines for Touch ID. I'm not going to go after those immediately because I feel like there might be something more to this. Let me go ahead and get ZXW tool opened up here to the long screw damage on iPhone 6. Okay. And we're going to connect the battery to it. I'm losing my mind. iPhone 6 screw holes break. Pretty sure we're primarily concerned about touch ID in that screw hole. My no image, no backlight screw hole is the bottom left. And honestly, it looks pretty good. And then we've got a PP1V8 line under this screw hole, but I don't see any damage there. I only see damage to the bottom right hole. And I also see ZXW tool getting ready to crash. Maybe I should upgrade it like everybody's been telling me. Come on, baby. Come on, you load your data off of some server on the other side of the planet. Whoa, it actually loaded. Holy shit. When it when I when it thinks for that long, it's just it's just not loading. So yeah, under that screw hole we've got a three volt mesa line. These uh these lines here, these are also for touch ID. What do we got way out here? I actually don't know what those are for. Okay, moving right along. Let's go back to the microscope. We're going to leave that screw hole alone for now. Although it could have something important pulled to ground. Let's not stress about that just yet. So this was here for backlight with no image. Let's go ahead and get a look at this one component down here that's all scratched off. because it sure does sort of look burnt. Okay, now I'm getting 15,000 ohms across that component. And it is FL2027. It is a PP1V8 line. For the display. So that would absolutely cause issues getting an image on the screen. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and replace that little dude. I'm going to anchor the phone down to the table. So that I can get some pressure on it without it sliding around on me. Okay, throw me a couple little shieldy shields in here. One there. I'm going to put a shield on the battery. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if I can show you. The shield up top. I'm going to put a shield on the battery here. And just for giggles and shits, I'm going to throw a shield I'm going to throw a shield in here to shield my power button. I knew those shields would be useful for something. All right, now we're going to switch tips over to something that's got a hook on it. Which that tip's not in my description yet, but I'll be linking this tip in my description shortly after this video. 
Okay, let's use some hot air and start softening up the goop. Because we need to get in here and replace this filter right now. So we'll just kind of soften this up a bit. Before doing board level rework, it is always important to remember to disconnect the battery. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, I was putting some hot air on this board and I'm trying to dig out FL20 whatever's carrying PP1V8 to this display connector. Alright, let's get a little flux in here. That's enough. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember to keep the uh, camera in focus for you guys. I'll get better at it. And all I'm trying to do here is just somewhat melt, lower the melting point of that, which I realize it might be completely welded to the board. So we're not going we're not going to concentrate on lowering that too much. We're just going to concentrate on not burning the battery. What the? There we go. All right, let's get that off the board. There we go very carefully to not melt anything else around it get a little more flux on that situation now we're going to fluff up the pads that were under that thing now i haven't checked for any shorts to ground as to why this thing smoked it was most likely connector related which is also why this component is here to, <laughs> to start with Oops. Once in a while. All right. Let's grab us a filter. What size is that? What is it even? All right. Let's set our filter on this thing. I know that one's seen better days, but it's a good filter. And as long as you don't run a bunch of current through it, it'll continue to be a good filter too. Okay. All right, let's check that line for any shorts to ground. So I've got my meter set to ohms. I'm gonna put my black probe on ground and I'm gonna put my other probe on either side of that filter. Boy, this whole thing's kind of hot. We're at 4K and rising. So let's let the board cool off. Let's see, being that that's a 1.8 volt line, I would expect to be able to live with a fairly low resistance because 1.8 volts isn't, you know, it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere fast. So this may be one of those lines, well, kind of like the, uh, like the one volt lines going to the CPU, those lines have a pretty low resistance whenever you check those because they're only one volt. All right, and we are 50K open circuit. It's kind of bouncing all over the place, but coming back to open circuit, I'm not sure if that's entirely normal behavior, but I can tell you it's a hell of a lot better than a path to ground. So, all right, so this 1.8 volt filter was blown on this phone. I never even plugged this thing in to test it because a lot of times I don't whenever it's a prior repair attempt. Um, just blindly plugging it in to test it sometimes is what it takes to make my job a hell of a lot harder and longer. So, yeah, I said it. All right. So, 
let's use my screen and not their screen because I know my screen works. This really was a blind one. Like, I didn't pre screen this and figure out, like, all right, let's pick an easy one for the day's video. I didn't do that. This was just a. Honestly, I thought I was going to be getting into severe long screw damage in the bottom left hole. I, I really did. Even though the description was image no backlight, or uh, backlight no image, normally bottom left long screw was going to yield no image and no backlight. This one, I just, I had this hunch. I was wrong. I can't believe I was wrong. Unreal. All right, can we get this in the image here? Can we see it? We have backlight. We have battery icon. Can you see it? All right. Let's go ahead and let this phone charge for a minute. I could just hook straight onto the board with my supply and run it that way, but I don't know. Some days I'm in a hurry, some days I'm not. All right, so we're going to check for voltage here at the battery because I'm impatient and I want to know if it's charging without waiting half the day. So it's at 3.3 volts, 3.35, 3.36, 3.38. So apparently... I don't know, it's almost like something was really, really, really draining the battery. So let's kick the actual battery out of the way. And let's plug in this thing. This is a gift that was sent to me from Shake with All Phone Toys in Bryan, Texas. Uh, man, you sure send me a lot of stuff. I, I'm not going to turn it down. This kind of stuff's really, really handy. Now, I will say that I'm going to wind up ordering some of these little battery connectors that are soldered to these little boards uh, because I have actually cracked the one off of the 6 Plus and now I have to be a little bit more gentle with them. But I'm also going to be breaking these out of this bundled cable and what I'm going to be doing is basically hooking them all to a fixed 4 volt supply independent of each other because this here, this plugging and unplugging, this stuff's going to wind up wearing out. So I've never had a set of these cables before. This actually works really, really well except for the dirty power coming out of my supply uh, tends to cause random reboots. However, it does work quite well for testing crap like this. So let's connect this here, making sure our voltage is still right. And I just answered my question as to whether or not it's drawing unnecessary power. We are currently drawing zero amps and I've got it set at 3.9 volts. So I'm gonna push the power button here, 100 milliamps, let off the power button, 200 milliamps. This phone is booting, and we now have image and backlight. So I didn't really do any troubleshooting on this one. You know, a lot of what, you know, a lot of what I'm showing you, this is really, really, really basic stuff. This wasn't like mad scientist tracking down stuff. This was really, really easy. I opened the phone, I looked at it, and I'm like, hmm, that looks burnt. What is it? Oh, that's the 1.8 volt line going to the display connector. Hmm. So really nothing very complicated here. Now I do still need to sort of scratch my head over that bottom right long screw damage but and sometimes that long screw damage it's not quite bad enough to cause any problems so it, it really just depends on on what I'm getting into here. Do we have touch? Okay so we have touch I do not believe I have a passcode on this one. I'm going to check our system to be sure. Um, but quick visual inspection, and, and this phone is fixed. So uh, I've got to cut this short and move on. i got a lot more to do, and maybe I'll get time to do more videos today. We'll see. So that's going to be it for this video. I really thank you all for watching. This channel is just really, really approaching 10,000 subscribers in a hurry. And I'm just, I'm one of these people that sticks to myself, and I'm, I'm a complete social phobe. Like, if you get me on the phone, like by some miracle, if you get me on the phone and feel like you're going to talk just like you know me from the channel, it's not the same. It's not the same thing. I can sit here and talk to a camera all day long, but you put me in a car with somebody I don't know and expect me to strike up a conversation, it's going to be a quiet, awkward day. So, 
that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all have successful repairs, and I really hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.